Hey, good morning. So I'm making some keto sausage balls. It's actually this recipe called Five Ingredient Keto Sausage Balls. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link to the recipe down in the description. <clears throat> I think I might actually do six ingredient. I'm thinking about adding some green onion. Um, haven't tried that before, but I think it sounds good. So I just finished sauteing this sausage, this mild pork sausage from Publix. Um, it's pretty clean. It is not loaded with different processed ingredients. So I think it's somewhat healthy. So I'm just going to take this and drain the oil off of it. can get messy a little bit. Alright, so I'm actually doubling this recipe. It calls for one pound of sausage, but this is two pounds. Um, what should I do next? I guess I'll shred the cheddar cheese. It calls for one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. This Cabot Creamery was, uh, I think it was two for five dollars at Publix. So usually I do Cracker Barrel cheese because I like the flavor, but I think this one's good also. I think any cheese that you buy in a block is going to be, of course, better than that pre-shredded stuff. I know the angle probably isn't the best, but I don't know. My kitchen is small, so it's hard to get the angles right. I know I'm not on camera, but I still have to do for right now. And if you didn't know, four ounces of solid cheese like this equals one cup. So this block is uh, an eight ounce block, so that's two cups. Of course, if you have a food processor, you can throw the cheese in there and this would be a lot faster. I have one, but I'm pretty sure the processor attachment broke. I haven't messed with it ever since it broke. So, I'm just... 
just doing it by hand. If I wanted to do a lot, I would look at the processor. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what else the plan is for today. I'm thinking I'll make these sausage balls and then, as you can see, I got, well, one and three quarter blocks of cream cheese out. I was thinking about making some, some of my own whipped cream cheese with chopped up green onion in it. Um, I like to put that stuff on the uh, stupid easy keto bread rounds, the bagels that I make. Those things with the... Uh, Green onion cream cheese is really good. I looked at some green some green onion cream cheese at the store. And of course it's loaded with a bunch of other chemicals. Chemicals and preservatives. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just try to make my own. I think I've done it once before and it comes out pretty good. I think you really can't go wrong with onion and cream cheese. <coughs> So I'll do that and then, uh, well, once I'm done cooking, I'm going to eat breakfast. And then I'll probably go out to the gym, I think. <clears throat> All right, so it's. Two cups of cheese, uh, the breakfast sausage, cream cheese, one cup of almond flour. I'll do the almond flour now. See if I can adjust this camera angle. There, that might be a little bit better. <clears throat> well, let me get the scissors. By the way, I bought a microphone to use, but I tested it yesterday and the microphone lapel part powered off. Some junk from China, coming from Amazon. So I might be returning it. That's a heaping cup, heaping cup of almond flour. Nice. Typically, number cold. Baking powder, half teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking powder. It doesn't really seem like a lot of baking powder for this recipe. So I think the Stupid Easy Bread Rounds uses a tablespoon in one recipe. So yeah, this is... 
one teaspoon Bacon powder, almond flour, cheddar cheese, just need the cream cheese. And by the way, today is also the be like savings time. Yeah, time changed one hour ahead. So I woke up this morning thinking I got some good sleep. And I realized the time changed. Try to chop this up a little bit. Usually I end up using my fingers for this stuff, which I have cleaned. Alright, uh, now I just need to add the sausage. recipe is being doubled so if you don't want this much then you can follow the actual recipe I'm gonna preheat the oven I think it's 400 um, uh, I got the recipe right here. Uh, 375. Mix all this stuff up. Now, one of the notes in the recipe is that you can change up the, your cheese to give it a different type of flavor. So, for this recipe, I used sharp cheddar cheese. Um, it's white cheddar. You can use yellow cheddar, although I don't think yellow and white <clears throat> actually offer a different taste. I think it's just coloring. Um, but you can use pepper jack cheese if you wanted it a little spicier. I don't know how something like Swiss cheese would taste. I like Swiss cheese with turkey and mayonnaise on a sandwich with rye bread. That's my favorite sandwich. My great grandmother used to actually make that on my mom's side. I guess it was a German thing. I'm pretty sure she was German. Now I'm going to use my fingers. Actually, before I use my fingers, I'm going to put some parchment paper down on this pan. Last time I made these, I made them on the larger side, and um, they cooked all the way through, but I still feel like the filling just was, like I had a raw texture. Like I said, nothing 
was raw as it cooked. But uh, I might make them smaller this time. But not too small because I've made them really small to use as an appetizer once. And they all flattened out. All the cheese melted. So I guess you kind of need the right, I don't know, the right size to make sure it doesn't melt too much. I think I may have also overcooked it because uh, I was trying to make them more solid. So you can't really overcook it. I mean, you can, but you don't want to. Because there's so much cheese in it, once it heats up that hot, it just melts and doesn't actually get solid. <clears throat> okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna try to move this pan. So you can see it better. I'm probably going to do like a typical meatball size. I like that. But they do rise a little bit. It's not much baking powder in it, but you know, last time they expanded a lot. So besides my weight loss that I'm working on, I'm also working on getting out of debt this year completely. Um, I forget if it was 2022 or last year, but I was able to pay my house off, pay my car off, and uh, this year all that's left are three credit cards. So, I don't know, I think it's kind <clears> of <throat> not funny, but interesting how getting out of debt and also losing weight just kind of feels similar. It's like you have to have self-control with not spending, self-control with not overeating, overeating or eating the foods that you become addicted to. Um... And I find also, like, once you start to care for yourself, care for yourself and what you're eating, you start to also care for yourself better in other areas as well. Like wanting to get out of debt to better your financial situation. I'm thinking I'll be out of debt completely in June or July. Because actually I want to buy a mirrorless camera. It's my buddy Sam, my best friend, he's uh, having his child in June. So I want that camera to record some good footage of him. And then I want the camera also for my upcoming trip to the UK in September. So... It'll push back the payment of the credit card debt, but I don't know. Stuff like that, I like to, I don't know if it's just an excuse that I've created for myself, but I like to uh, get decent technology that'll create those memories that you can look back on for like the rest of your life. I think it's worth it. Because when we... Our, on our deathbed, we won't be thinking about the debt that we had or the debt that we paid off. We'll be thinking about the memories that we spent with family and friends and being able to look at photos and video, I think is important to have. 
<clears throat> I've also I've been tempted to get a new vehicle. I really like the Toyota Land Cruiser. They start at like fifty, I think fifty five thousand. That's just ridiculous. <clears throat> it would be nice, but you know, I don't want to I don't want to put myself in debt for that much. Um having a nice vehicle, it's like what joy does that really bring you? over time you're happy when you first get it but then i don't know how long maybe a month of that when it starts to wear off then you realize that you're stuck with 700 a month payments i don't know how much insurance would cost also so it's a want but i don't i'm going to try my best not to let myself give in to that like I said, the car I have right now, it's a 2018 Accord Sport 2.0 Turbo. So it's a nice car. And it's paid off, so I just need to be happy with that. I like my Honda vehicles. I've owned, well, all the, all the vehicles I've owned was, I forget what year it was, maybe a 95 Ford Escort. A little white sedan two-door sedan and after that I bought a 99 Ford Explorer that was a pretty nice vehicle then after the Explorer I thought I would be smart and purchase a VW Jetta it was actually older it was a used vehicle that was a 96 Jetta and I have to be glad I had nothing but problems with that vehicle Door locks are falling out. I think the driver's side door lock fell out completely, so I had to open it from the passenger side. Transmission slipped. Um, the uh, moonroof leaked. <laughs> I think also the AC, like the condensation from the, the from the AC, would run down from the AC in the front of the vehicle down the floorboard and then puddle into the back. So it was a mess. And then after that vehicle, I bought a 2006 Honda Civic. And I like that vehicle a lot. My grandmother, my grandmother Rita loved that vehicle. Um, that was a really good vehicle. But uh, then I had that. I had that when I started my job in 2012 and um i was there for a little while and got the itch to buy something new so i got a 2016 civic that was also a good car but i was in a car accident in 2018 which totaled that it wasn't my fault it's the other person's fault they cut across the road and i t-boned them they ran a stop sign. <clears throat> so when that vehicle was totaled, I got a 2018 Accord that I'm driving now. And that car has been, it's been good. Although when I first got it, I think a month after I got it, I rocked there. I was driving behind a dump truck and a little pebble or something. Fell onto the road and bounced up into my AC condenser and knocked out the condenser. So I had to spend about $600 to fix that a month after getting the vehicle. I was pissed about that. I just, that's one thing I don't care for the way it's designed, the front bumper, because it, it's like there's nothing that protects the AC condenser. So. But ever since then, I haven't had any issues with it. <laughs> So I guess I can't complain. I've never owned a Toyota, but I know they're pretty popular. I think they're reliable also. So these are ready to go into the oven. Um, 
Oven's at 375, and they have to bake for 20 to 24 minutes. So I'll throw them in. Hey, Google, set alarm for 22 minutes. So uh, we'll be right back once these are done cooking. Okay, just took these out of the oven. And after I put them in the oven, I realized that I forgot to add the green onion. So, oh well, I'll try next time. Um, but uh, you can see these kind of flattened out a little bit too. Not too sure why. Maybe more almond flour might help it. I don't know. But they're still edible, so... So this is lunch today. This is the Factor 75 spicy Calabrian style ground beef with roasted zucchini and creamy herb green beans. It smells decent, so we'll see how it tastes. <clears throat> I also made my cream cheese and chive homemade spread, so we'll have that later sometime.